Welcome to Web Handling. I am super excited to continue Dave's defect with a discussion of cork rush. This single defect will teach us more about winding and winding defects than almost any other. Even if you don't suffer much, or at all, from cork rush, you must see this clip in order to better understand winding. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Cork rush is quite common in low modulus films and common enough in metals and paper and elsewhere. By now, if you've been following this series, you will know there is no single root cause. Instead, there are two very distinct mechanics that have a half a dozen factors of varying strength. The major factors include the core, the web, and the winder, each of which has several sub-factors. These factors are well known by the long-standing and well-proven science of web handling, winding, and material mechanics. Two of the three distinct types of core crush, yes, there is more than one type, are tight defects. We have known for more than a half a century that the pressure is highest near the core, medium in the middle of the roll, and zero at the outside. This pattern is true regardless of web properties, winder design, winder settings, curves, or taper. Indeed, this is so well known that we can even calculate these pressures. These winding physics are covered in the advanced winding section of my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 course that has been taken by thousands of students, just like you. It is also covered in my must-have 750-page Web Handling Handbook. It is also covered in 100 articles and conference papers and theses. So, there is no need to do that here. Just remember that the pressure is highest near the core, and that's mostly all you need to know for two of the core crushes, as well as blocking and bulk loss that we covered earlier in this series. So, what is your first move if the core crushes? Your first move is what any good web handler would consider. That is, whether changing wound roll tightness might help reduce the problem. So, if tightness might help, what direction would we turn the knob? Up or down? It depends. <laughs> it depends because core crush is not one defect, but rather three totally different defects that share the same outcome and, unfortunately, the same name. If you have film or other stretchy materials, you're most likely to have a type 1 core crush. Here, every wrap under tension translates to pressure. If that pressure exceeds the buckling strength, then the core will give way. If so, back off. So, if you have stiff film such as PET, or if you have paper, or if you have foil, you are most likely to have a type 3 core crush. This is a totally different defect. We know that this is a totally different defect because the loads that crushed the core did not come from winding forces. They came from external forces, such as roll handling. We know this is a totally different defect because the core crushes after winding rather than during winding as a type 1 would. Finally, we know this is a totally different defect because you don't want to decrease tightness. You want to increase tightness. What we are doing here is using the layers of the roll as arches to protect the core from the outside world. Why should I use my precious web to protect the cardboard core, you say? 
I will give you two reasons. First, if you lose a core, you will lose your precious web. Second, it works, or at least it helps. Finally, there is a less common core crush that occurs with certain materials that shrink after winding. These could be materials that are wound hot, or materials such as biaxially oriented polypropylene, or BOPP for short, that shrink due to crystallization in the first day or so after extrusion. In either case, this is a totally different case again, because the crushing forces did not come from winding, and did not come from the outside world. They came from chemistry. Also, in modest to extreme cases, type 2 core crush is not even a winding problem. Not a winding problem, you say? Why not? Well, let me define a winding problem as one that has a winding solution. In severe cases of type 2 crush, the great portion of the crushing forces comes from shrinkage. While winding looser is a nice first effort, it will probably do very little because the winder just does not have the power that the chemistry has. So, if it's not a winding problem, what is it? It is a product process design problem. You may need to change the design. Here we mean core rather than the web. The core needs to be more buckling resistant. The options are many, but simply increasing wall thickness is one of the more effective unless you want to change from fiber cores to steel pipe. Core plugs can work for the narrow rolls of case 2 and case 3, provided that they are extremely sturdy and driven into the side of the rolls with a mallet. Crushing forces are quite large, so must be any restraint in order to be effective. In summary, for these and many other problems, the good web handler considers winding tightness first. However, that requires knowing which type of crush you have. After doing as much as possible there, the problem then becomes one of product process design. Also, as we've learned, the good problem solver does not work with outcomes. Instead, the good problem solver works to diagnose root cause mechanics. Think of core crush like a headache. A headache could be caused by stress, or it could be caused by a brain tumor. And you would want to know which is the case. An aspirin might be appropriate for stress, but almost certainly not for a brain tumor. So, hopefully guided by science, we can avoid the superficial observation of mere outcomes, like the chorus crushing, and avoid the distinct possibility of coming to the wrong conclusion using outcomes. I know this is a lot to cover in a short time, but you can play this back again. Better yet, take my award-winning Web 101 course, where we explain core crush and many other defects in much more detail. There are many standardized and custom tests for core strength in four different categories. These are flat crush, axial or ring crush, torque capacity, and radial crush. While the first two are by far the most common commercial tests, they are quite different load cases than the radial crush that would be most relevant to core crush that we've just discussed. In short, these are convenient tests, and then there are the relevant tests.
There are more than 150 articles, columns, papers, and other publications on cores that you can find from the free and easy Roysom Library by Abbott App. Unfortunately, only six of them are for Core Crush. If you do a Google search, things are even more confusing and hopeless. Thus, I would direct you to my Web 201.67 A through G clips to learn more about cores. Better yet, take modules 20 through 29 of my award-winning and trademark Web 101 class to learn more about winding and winding defects. These courses are available as video on demand through AIMCAL's Converting School online as well as Apita and Tappy. Thank you so very much for joining me in this defect solving and defect preventing series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will discuss another one of my favorite defects, corrugations. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. See you next time.